Well, finding yourself on your own due to the death of a partner or through divorce or separation is traumatic enough. But aside from the personal grief, financially it can also be devastating. So what can you do if you find yourself suddenly single and having to manage on your own? Can you still build wealth through property investment? Well, our next guest says you certainly can. We welcome back to the show Claire McKay, independent financial advisor and business owner at Quantum Financial. Claire, great to see you again. Thanks so much for coming on the program. Now, just looking at, I mean, the research, statistically, um, what are you seeing when it comes to uh, people finding themselves single suddenly? Um, certainly, is there a lot of research surrounding older women, perhaps over 60? Absolutely. I think the, you know, we know that um, if you unexpectedly become single, your finances are inv invariably adversely affected mm. and it's invariably for those who are divorcing later in life or separating later in life, it's a lot harder and a lot more daunting to regroup after going through that very traumatic experience and then saying, well, how do I, where am I going to live and how am I going to get through and make sure that I'm going to be financially secure. So it is, it is very distressing for anyone. Mm. Yes. And I know it sort of seems, it's a sexist archetype we've we worked out that women don't have any idea about money if they if they split up or if their partner dies. That's not necessarily the case because we are pretty much intermingled. But that doesn't mean you're totally on top of the entire financial picture. And you really should be, shouldn't you? Absolutely. I mean, I've had a client who he found himself suddenly single because his wife passed away, and she was the one that drove all the management of their finances. Yeah. So it can happen in in a couple. You divide and conquer to your best skills, <laughs> but you should be aware of the high level decisions yeah. so that it should through uh, through misadventure or through des deciding to to de you know decouple. <laughs> <laughs> Unconsciously. Yeah. Or, or, or when you're just dumped. Yeah, exactly, Let's just cut to the exactly, chase. Exactly. So knowing um, where your finances are at yeah. a high level so that then if you decide to split your finances, how to best arrange that for you going mm. forward? Because it's all about the rest of your life starting today. Mm. So, I mean, if it obviously happens suddenly, what are, what are the first things that, that you need to do? What, what's the sort Well, of if, it's, if it's in a relationship breakdown, value everything. At least get on a page all the assets and value them so that you know what numbers you're working on. And if you disagree on the value, then get some indep um, independent valuers in to say, OK, let's, let's mediate a, a, an agreed price. Because then you can start saying, well, I don't need the five-bedroom house because the kids are all grown up and I don't need that now, but I do need a place to live, so what do we do? You know? um, or, actually, I do have young... You know, I'm going to be looking after the young children on a full-time basis, so I do need to be with a house with space for the kids yeah. and then how do we how do we arrange that mm -hmm. so you know, at least value everything on, on day one and then work out what do you need going forward mm. and then negotiating it. Besides a couple of wines. Yeah, <laughs> lots of wine. <laughs> <laughs> some good friends. Those late night list making. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and try and put the knives away. Yeah. <laughs> That's so true. That as well. What about the property asset? I, I mean, I, obviously, so you value that, but then when it comes to, you know, splitting it or one staying in it, can you buy out? the other partner? Are there there's sort of yeah. discounts that you get perhaps for a family transfer? Well, Is that what it's called? Or? Yeah, well when you're, when you're splitting assets under the family court provisions then there's no um, CGT issues or tax oh. issues or okay. stamp duty which is great mm. um, but it t turns out well what asset do you want you don't want to be left with an asset that you physically can't maintain mm. or financially maintain exactly. as well or are you yeah. taking on the mortgage for that asset mm. as well so it's not a straight well I'll just take the, the home and you take the rest of the finances um, and it's not you know, you've got to sit down and think about it I think if people rush these decisions they end up with hindsight saying actually I could have made a better decision but isn't that the temptation is to rush yes you really should talk to a financial advisor it's going to be calm and cool because they're not they're not, and not lawyer, invested financial yes yeah. once the lawyer I mean you know the old saying is the only people who win in a in a divorce are, are the lawyers mm. yeah. so you don't really want to get them involved but you do want to have someone who's on your side who can look at it impartially who doesn't care what the dinner plates who, who yeah. which yes. auntie gave those yeah. dinner plates but is thinking about you going forward yes yeah. what about if sorry sorry to jump in if there's a second property investment property does that also not attract any sort of uh, taxes or penalties if you have well, to it, flog it well it depends on, you know, it's an investment property, so yeah. it doesn't get caught on those sort of things. And it yeah. does depend on who owned it, did you live in it, was it your home to begin with? So all those yeah. other traditional tax concessions that you would have looked at when you first bought the property oh. as well. Yeah. If it gets to that point, I mean, could you access your super to help fund mortgage 
repayments mm -hmm. or That's is that a not a thought. good idea? If you're in financial well, hardship? When you're in financial hardship, hardship you're, you're grasping for anything. I mean, yeah. super is your nest egg for when you don't want to work anymore. Yeah. So if you start rating that now, then you're going to be working for a lot longer <laughs> or you're going to be living on the age pension, which is, you know, not a great, great not a great start. Mm. So if you're in absolute financial hardship, you can apply for your, to your super fund, but they will actually, A, they have discretion, they don't have to give you the money, and B, they will actually say, well, what have you done? How, how you know, yeah, what have you actually done? You? And I, I mm. always say, look, when these sort of major life events occur, revisit your budget, re-look at how you're spending your money, because this is day one of the rest of your life, and the, the sooner you get on, in control of that, mm -hmm. the more confident you'll be about the decisions you make. And if you need to look at more extreme measures like that, then you've got a plan of attack, and you know that it is, you've done everything else first. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you think you can find money in the budget? There is. I defy anyone to say <laughs> that they can't find money in their budget. I've, you know, I think that there's always a little <laughs> bit that you can say, oh, that was my, you know, my secret you know, indulgence or whatever. Yeah. And that's when it's say, well, actually, it's going be, it's going to be a tight budget for a while and then you reward yourself and say, okay, then when I get back on my feet I can, you know, loosen it a little bit. Yeah. It's a good discipline. Mm. Yeah. Credit rating. If okay. you've been married for a long time, for whatever reason you're no longer married, perchance, um, credit rating is very important. Now, do you end up taking that credit rating, the combined credit rating away with you or do you get your own credit rating? Well, I guess the key thing is what do you need your credit rating for? To get a credit yeah. card. Yeah. <laughs> Straight away. <laughs> And spend, yeah. Right. <laughs> so again, this is. I mean, I went. I helped a, a couple, and they were separating. And she made one of the first things she did in the separation was make sure that she was not co-signatory on all the debt, because there was an awful lot of debt in their financial structure, mm -hmm. and she didn't want the significant mansion they had. She didn't want the debt that went with that, and that was one of the first things she did, so that she could have a nice, clean. How can you be unsignatory? Well, you know, you talk to your, the financial um, lenders and make sure that you, your name gets taken off all the oh. documentation. Yeah, okay. it was a lot of hard work, but yeah. it's, it's worth it. Okay. Gosh, and yes. particularly if it's not just the property, but the business as well, yeah. because that if you forget that you're signatory mm. on things and mm. then you go and apply for a loan, that might come up as well. Yeah. So absolutely well cleaning everything out. It might sound insurmountable at the time, but I mean, is it important to try and stay in the property market? Say the, the family home gets sold, you get a lump sum, is it important to try and kind of get back in rather than just thinking, oh, no, no lender's going to look at me now. I'm on a single income. I'm looking after children as well, so I can work a few days. Is that, you know, is it important to try and see that as an important way of investing? Well, it comes down to your goals and it comes down to saying, well, I've got to live somewhere mm. and am I happy renting and do I have the finances and the security to say I can rent for the next 15 years and it's going to be okay? Or do I, am I building towards the security of knowing that this is my home? Mm. And... You know, start from day one and say, you know, you did it before, you can do it again. And yes, it's daunting when you're on your own, but it's not the end of the world. And I know so many people who have divorced later in life and who have now owned their own home and they are now, you know, focusing on the day that they can retire. And they've done it. And other people have done it. And so I think the key thing is that it's, it's not... It, it is the end of that world. It's the beginning of a far more exciting one. And whether you stay in the property market or you um, hold out for a period and work your way back into it, it comes down to your circumstances and, and what you're needing with your family, whether you're on your own or with your kids or, or mm. whatever. Yeah. It's so reassuring to talk to you. <laughs> <I just feel laughs> exactly. You've got to realise, I mean, the yeah. numbers are numbers, statistics are statistics. There's a chance that you... We will end up divorced. Not you, brides. No, but then... <laughs> <laughs> I've done it a few times, so I've made up for your numbers. That's the, okay. The key tips, what? Plan, budget, yeah. know where your finances are. Know where your finances are. Right. Even if you're delegating the day-to-day -day management to your partner, have a you know, big-picture idea of it. And the thing is, it may not be divorce. It may through, be through misadventure. Mm. And that's oh, you know, yeah. all the same issues yeah. with the grief that goes with that as well. Mm. Insurance, yeah. too, yeah. also yeah. important there, isn't, it? <laughs> isn't it? Um Claire, fantastic to get all your advice and Pleasure. expert tips. Thank you so Thank much you. for that.